a frosty Christmas Eve when the stars were shining, fared I forth alone where westward falls the hill. And from many a village in the watered valley, distant music reached me, peals of bells a-ringing. The constellated sounds ran sprinkling on earth's floor, as the dark vault above with stars was spangled o'er. Then sped my thoughts to keep that first Christmas of all, when the shepherds, watching by their folds ere the dawn, heard music in the fields, and marvelling could not tell whether it were angels or the bright stars singing. Now blessed be our country folks who are ringing for Christ in the belfries tonight, with arms lifted up to clutch with the rattling ropes that ran into the dark above and into the romping din. But to me, heard from afar, it was starry music, angel song, comforting as the comfort of Christ when he spake tenderly to his sorrowing flock. The old words came to me by the riches of time, mellowed and transfigured as I stood on the hill, hearkening in the aspect of the eternal silence. <laughs> Is it right to give one's own presents away? asked the little boy Jim of his father one day as Christmas was drawing near. Hmm, 
If I gave away what was given to me, it would be unkind to the giver, you see, declared father. And mother said, too, it would not be a nice thing to do. So, on Christmas Day, when father woke up, he found by his side a little live pup with a card that said, Daddy, from Jim. And Jim gave his mother a nice present, too. A little dog collar, all shiny and new. I know, that said wee Jim, that you'll let the pup stay, for you said it was rude to give presents away. of St. Wilfrid in the chapel of Manhood End, ordered a midnight service for such as cared to attend. But the Saxons were keeping Christmas and the night was stormy as well, and nobody came to the service, though Eddie rang the bell. Wicked weather for walking, said Eddie of Manhood End, but I must go on with the service for such as cares to attend. The altar lamps were lighted, an old march donkey came, bold as a guest invited, and stared at the guttering flame. The storm beat on at the windows, the water flash splashed on the floor, and a wet, yoke-weary bullock pushed in through the open door. How do I know who is greatest? How do I know who is least? That is my father's business said Eddie, Wilfred's priest. But three are gathered together, so listen to me and attend. 
I bring you good news, my brethren, said Eddie of Manhood End. And he told the ox of a manger and a stall in Bethlehem. And he spoke to the ass of a rider that rode to Jerusalem. They steamed and dripped in the chancel. They listened and never stirred. While just as though they were bishops, Eddie preached them the word. Till the gale blew off in the marshes, and the windows showed the day, and the ox and the ass together wheeled and clattered away. And when the Saxons mocked him, said Eddie of manhood end, oh, I dare not shut my chapel on such as cares to attend. If you go outside, you must walk in the snow. You will come back with little white shoes on your feet, little white slippers of snow that have heels of sleet. Stay by the fire, my cat. Lie still, do not go. See how the flames are leaping and hissing low. I will bring you a saucer of milk like a marguerite, so white and so smooth, so spherical, so sweet. Stay with me, cat. Outdoors the wild winds blow. Outdoors the wild winds blow, mistress, and dark is the night. Strange voices cry in the trees, intoning strange law. And more than cats move, lit by our eyes, green light. On silent feet, where the meadow grasses hang hoar. Mistress, there are portents abroad of magic and might, and things that are yet to be done. Now, open the door.
25th of December. My dearest darling, that partridge in that little pear tree, what an enchanting, romantic and poetic present. Bless you and thank you. Your deeply loving Emily. 26th of December. My dearest darling Edward, the two turtle doves arrived today and are cooing away in the pear tree as I write. I am so touched and grateful. With undying love, as always, Emily. 27th of December. My darling Edward, you do think of the most original presents. Whoever thought of sending anyone three French hens? Do they really come all the way from France? It's a pity we have no chicken coops, but I expect we'll find some. Uh, thank you anyway. They're heaven. Your loving Emily. 28th of December. Dearest Edward, what a surprise. Four calling birds arrived this morning. They are very sweet, even if they do call rather loudly and they make telephoning impossible but I do expect they'll calm down when they get used to their new home. Anyway, I'm very grateful. Of course I am. Love from Emily. 29th of December. Dearest Edward, the mailman has just delivered five beautiful gold rings, one for each finger and all fitting perfectly. A really lovely present. Lovelier in a way than birds, which do take rather a lot of looking after. The four that arrived yesterday are still making a terrible row, and I'm afraid none of us got much sleep last night. Mummy says she wants to use the rings to wring their necks. She's only joking, I think, but I do know what she means, but I love the rings. Bless you, love Emily. 30th of December. Dear Edward, whatever I expected to find when I opened the front door this morning, it certainly wasn't six sucking great geese laying eggs all over the doorstep. Frankly, I'd rather hope that you'd stop sending me birds. We have no room for them and they've already ruined the croquet lawn. I know you meant well, but let's call it a halt, shall we? Love, Emily. 31st of December. Edward, I thought I said no more birds. But this morning, I wake up to find no less than seven swans trying to get into our tiny little goldfish pond. I'd rather not think of what happened to all of the goldfish. The whole house seems to be full of birds. To say nothing of what they leave behind. Please, please, Stop. Yours, Emily. 1st of January. Frankly, I think I prefer birds. What am I supposed to do with eight milkmaids and their cows? Is this some kind of joke? If so, I'm afraid I don't find it very amusing. Emily. 2nd of January. Look here, Edward, this has gone too far. You say you're sending me nine ladies dancing? Well, all I can say from judging from the way they dance, they are certainly not ladies. The village just isn't accustomed to seeing a regiment of shameless hussies with nothing on but their lipstick comforting around the village green. But it's Mummy and I who get the blame. If you value our friendship, which I do less and less, kindly stop this ridiculous behaviour at once. Emily. 3rd of January. 
as I write this letter, ten disgusting old men are prancing around what used to be the garden before the geese and the swans and the cows got at it, and several of them, I observe, are taking inexcusable liberties with the milkmaids. Meanwhile, the neighbours are trying to have us evicted. I shall never speak to you again. 4th of January. This is the last straw. You know how I detest bagpipes. The place has now become something between a menagerie and a madhouse, and a man from the council has just declared it unfit for habitation. At least Mummy has been spared this last outrage. They took her away this afternoon in an ambulance. I hope you're satisfied. 5th of January. Sir, our client, Miss Emily Wilbraham, instructs me to inform you that with the arrival on her premises at 7.30 this morning of the entire percussion section of the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra and several of their friends, she has no course left open to her but to seek an injunction to prevent you from importuning her further. I am, sir, yours faithfully, G. Creep, Solicitor at Law.
Twas in the moon of winter time, when all the birds had fled, that mighty Gichi Manitou sent angel choirs instead. Before their light the stars grew dim, and wandering hunters heard the hymn, Jesus your King is born, Jesus is born in excelsis gloria. Within a lodge of broken bark the tender babe was found, a ragged robe of rabbit skin entwined his beauty round. And as the hunter braves drew nigh, the angel song rang loud, rang high. Jesus, your king is born. Jesus is born in excelsis gloria. The earliest moon of winter time is not so round and fair as was the ring of glory on the helpless infant there. And chiefs from far before him knelt with gifts of fox and beaver pelt. Jesus, your king, is born in excelsis gloria. O children of the forest free, O sons of Manitou, the holy child of earth and heaven is born this day for you. Come, kneel before the radiant boy who brings you beauty, peace and joy. Jesus, your king is born. Jesus is born in excelsis gloria. Thank you.